this is going to be a short tutorial, or at least as short as I can get it, um, on how to change your Windows 7 boot animation. Now, if you don't know what the boot animation is, it's that little uh, Windows logo that kind of comes in as three different color or four different colored balls, comes together, starts glowing, that whole thing when you start up your computer. You can change that. Microsoft doesn't support it officially, but as with anything, if somebody doesn't support it officially, somebody else finds a way around that. So people have found ways around it, and at first you had to manually edit your DLLs and hack system files. Now you don't have to because people have made programs to do it for you. Um, I'm actually going to go through the process of creating a compatible uh, Windows 7 boot animation and then applying it to your computer. Now, some things you're going to need. You're going to need three things. Um, I'm using After Effects CS5 from Adobe. Uh, you can use any kind of uh, video editing software or animation software as long as you can set either the number of frames or the frame rate. Um, and of course the size, but any image editor can do that. So the main thing is being able to set the frame rate or the total number of frames. Um, I'm using After Effects because it also makes the animations a lot easier because uh, of tweening and other video editing special effects functions like that. Um, if you don't have After Effects, you can download the trial version here at adobe.com slash products slash after effects slash what is after effects um, and if you like it enough you could do what I did and buy it um, I actually have the creative suite but uh, you can use the trial version if you want to if you just want to use it for a little while um, the next thing you're gonna need game maker um, specifically game maker 8 which as of now is the current version uh, you only need this for a small part of creating your boot animation, um, mainly to make the strip without having to... Uh, well, let me explain. A normal boot animation from Windows 7 is a huge bitmap. Instead of an animated image, it's a bitmap with each frame uh, placed underneath the frame before so it's a big strip of animations like kind of like a film strip now you can manually make one of those if you want to you know open it up in photoshop and manually place all the images but there are 105 frames so that gets tedious now game maker has a nice feature where if you load in frames of an animation you can export them back out as a strip and so you don't have to worry about doing that manually. Uh, there is a little catch where it makes the strips horizontal instead of vertical, but with a little bit of uh, working around that, uh, you can get it to work, but I'll explain that later. The last thing you need, and the most important, is the Windows 7 Boot Updater. You can get that at coderforlife.com slash projects slash win7boot. Um, and by the way, all of the links for all of these programs are going to be down in the description so check those out if you missed it um, this is the program that will actually apply your boot animation once you've finished making it so without this there's no reason to make a boot animation but um, if you have this you can actually use boot animations other people have also made I've put uh, I think like four or five now up on my DeviantArt account and I'll post a link to that on the bottom as well if you want to check out the logos I've made instead of making your own but uh, this tutorial is going to go through how to make your own so you can be a little bit more original because I'm sure you're all more creative than I am um, make sure though and this is very important there's a 32-bit version and a 64-bit version make sure you you download and use the correct version if you're running Windows 7 64-bit, use the 64-bit one. If you're running 32-bit, use 32-bit. That's very important. I don't know if there are any checks within the program, so just to make sure you don't screw up your computer, 
Use the right version. Okay, now that that's all out of the way, <coughs> I'm going to uh, teach you guys how to, you know, make your own animations. So we start out by going into After Effects, and uh, we're going to create a new composition. And the main thing here, there are a couple of main points that need to be uh, satisfied in order for you to create a compatible boot animation. The first thing is that all boot animations for Windows 7 are 200 pixels by 200 pixels. So make sure the width and height are set appropriately. If they are anything else, you will just end up screwing up your computer trying to apply it. Again, I don't know if boot 7 up or Win 7 boot updater has a check for this, so making sure that you have the right dimensions is very important. Next thing is um, you need 105 frames. Now, you can do that kind of any way you want to, but when the boot animation is actually played back on startup, it's played back at 15 frames per second with a 7 second animation. So, like I said, you could go for um, you could go for three and a half seconds at 30 frames per second if you wanted to, but then it's just gonna look slow and choppy when you play it back. So, if you want to keep things consistent, I'd say stick with 15 frames per second, seven seconds, and then create that comp. Uh, you're gonna end up putting all of this into a bitmap anyway, which doesn't have transparency, but you know, just to be on the safe side so you don't forget later, key thing is to create a new solid, which I did just by control Y, which is the shortcut for new solid. Make it the comp size and make it black. And just make sure you keep this as your background, just so that when you go to export it, you don't accidentally export it with transparency and have to worry about adding the background in later. And now you can design your logo however you want. Um, What's going to happen when you play it back is the first four seconds are just going to play straight through. And then from four to seven seconds, which is the last 45 frames of your animation, it's going to loop. So, like, the normal boot animation has the balls coming together, forming the Windows logo. And then the Windows logo starts glowing, kind of like in a strobe pattern. That glowing is the loop. So... From 0 to 4 seconds, the balls come in and form the logo, and then from 4 to 7, it glows. So when you design your animation, keep that in mind so that it looks decent. Now, I already have an animation I'm going to import in here. Uh, not the ghost. Uh, win customize. Boot animations. I'm going to, um, as my example, use my light ring because, oh, actually, if you notice, I already have that um, in there. So let me just open that up for my boot ring, since I already have the After Effects project in there. So light ring. Okay. So I have different comps in here. This is just because I have a widescreen computer, so I just wanted to make sure the aspect ratio was correct. If you want to do that, you make your the comp that you work in, make it 200 by 113, so it's the correct aspect ratio, 16 by 9, and then put that comp into a 200 by 200 comp in here. And like I said, that's just because I have a widescreen computer. If you have a regular computer, you know, that's not widescreen, then you don't need to worry about that. You can just start out at 200 by 200. But here's my animation, and if you watch, you'll see it glows like that. And then it kind of does the same thing glowing and turning. But you'll notice that at the end, it stops just short of finishing. And that's because it's going to loop back to four seconds where it's finished again. So by leaving out that last frame, it creates a more seamless loop. So, like I said, keep the looping in mind from four to seven seconds as you design your animation. So once you're done and you have your animation however you like, <coughs> you'll notice I have a little cold, but... I'm going to try to get through this. Um, when you have your animation how you like, you go into Composition, Make Movie, and you want to change the Output Module, which is File Format. I don't know why they call it Modules. 
you want to change that from whatever it's set to to a PNG sequence. All right? And hit OK. And then you want to come in here and save your PNG somewhere. Um, that's a different boot animation I've made. But I created for all of my boot animations, just to keep everything organized, I create a PNG folder specifically for these PNGs. And I put it in and I called it like activity and then I gave it the numbers. Yeah. Uh, basically wherever the brackets and the numbers are, that's where the numbers are going to be in the file name, like 001, 002, whatever. And I already have them here, so I'm just going to cancel this. But you save it, and you render it out. And when you do that, you're going to get a series of PNG images, one for each frame. And that is exactly what you want. So now, once you have that done, you want to come into Game Maker. And you can use the free trial version. It doesn't matter because... The trial version just has some limitations, but not time limitations. And the functionality we want for sprite strips is completely intact. So if you want to pay for it to do your own stuff, you can. Or you can just use the trial. I'm using the pro version because I do a lot of game making. Yeah. So now what you want to do, you click this little Pac-Man icon, which is new sprite. You click load sprite. And you go into the folder that has your PNGs. Again, it's on the pumpkins because this is the last animation I made. Uh, come into light ring, PNGs. Click the first one. Press Control A to select all. And press open. And what that's going to do, if you give it a second to load. Okay. It's 105 frames, so it may take a second or two to load. Um... Now you have it, and you'll notice it's the animation exactly as you designed it. But what you want to do is come into Edit Sprite. And like I said, if you were to, you know, you can see the preview of it if you want. But um, if you were to just hit File, Save as PNG right now, it would make a horizontal strip. So going from first frame to last frame is left to right. In Windows, you need a vertical strip. You know, first frame and last frame is top to bottom. So to fix that, you're going to have to load it into Paint and rotate the entire strip. But some of the more uh, visual learners out there will notice that if you create a horizontal strip like this and rotate the whole strip, each frame will also be rotated 90 degrees and it won't look right. It'll look like the whole animation is turned to the side. So, to fix that, you do a little workaround, like I was talking about before, which is simply you hit Transform, Rotate, and you do 90 degrees, and make sure clockwise is not checked. You want to go counterclockwise, or anti-clockwise for you British people, and make sure all images, apply to all images is checked, and click OK. And that's going to rotate everything 90 degrees counterclockwise, so that when you put the whole strip in and rotate it clockwise to get it vertical, it resets all the frames back to the correct orientation. So you'll notice it goes the wrong way. Yeah, see? It was just finishing out the enemy. I'm sorry, something's not right here. Oh, huh. You know what happened? I actually... I actually loaded in the strip that I had already made before. So I'm going to fix that. See, I already have the strip in here that you guys won't have that I forgot about from when I made the image the first time. So make sure that's not in there. Make sure it's just the uh, 105 PNG files. So it should end at 104 because it starts at 0. So there. 